Hey guys, Ben here with another C++ tutorial. Today we're going to be learning about something super cool called arrays, but first let's go ahead and write our uh, base program. I went ahead and deleted everything because we're starting fresh. So first thing you want to do is type include iostream because we're going to be using output, then using namespace std because we are using the standard library, and then your int main for our main function, and then your braces so you can put the body. And of course, return zero at the end for completeness, and if you're on Visual Studio, you'll definitely want a system uh, pause, of course. All right, so here's our basic little program. Now, what an array is, it's A-R-R-A-Y. An array is a variable that can hold multiple variables. And the reason we would want an array is, for instance, let's say we're trying to make an item shop where we have a big list of items that we want to sell and we want to print those out to the user or something. So we could we could do something like string item one equals boots and string item two equals hat or something like that. But the problem with this is once we have like 100 items or 200 items, then we need to literally write 200 variables on the screen. And it's really, really annoying to manage all that stuff. What if we change the way our shop works? We're going to have to mess around with all of those variables. Instead, we can store the entire list of shop items in one variable, and it's so much better. So we're going to make our variable out of strings today, at least our first variable. So let's include string at the top. Anytime you're working with strings, it's a good idea to include this so you can do things like see out the string. So if we want to make a string array, first we type we, we uh, type in the type of the array. So if we wanted an integer array, we could type if we wanted an integer array, we could type int, we could type char. If we wanted a char array, we're going to type string because we want a string array for our shop items. Then we name the variable. I'm going to call mine shop item names or something. And then the way we tell um, the compiler that this is an array is we use the brackets. So the, there are these little square braces right here. And then inside the brackets, you tell it how many string variables you want to store in the array. So I'm going to say four. My shop is going to have just four items in it. And then you can put a semicolon. So now what happens is whenever the compiler creates this variable, instead of just creating one variable, it's basically creating four variables side by side. Now I haven't initialized this. If I want to initialize it, I can use an array initialize, initialization list where you type equals and then curly braces, just like the curly braces in int main. And then in here, you type your values separated by commas. So this is a string array. So we're going to want to type strings in here. So let's type boots and then a comma, and then let's type sword, and then a comma, and then um, helmet, and then a comma, and then kitten. There we go. And you don't need a comma after the last one. So now we have created our array. So this is going to give us four items and it's well it's going to give us four item names that we can use later in our program we could make this bigger and type more uh, values in let's go ahead and print out our shop and let's prove that it works so what we want to do is use a for loop to loop through each of these and see out them on their own line so first let's see out welcome to the item shop and then we can do something like put uh, little asterisks for making it pretty. And then we'll do a new line, of course. So then what we're going to do is loop through our, our shop item names and print out each one. We can't do this. We can't say see out shop item names. That's not going to work. That's going to give us an error. Shop item names is not a single variable. We can't see out it. It's actually four variables. What we have to do is see out each variable one at a time. And we can do that with a for loop because what we do to get a certain variable, say we want to get boots, is we use what's called the index of that um, variable. And these are actually called elements. Each variable is an element of the array. So if we want the first element, what we're going to do is see out shop item names. And then in brackets, just like before, we type the index of the array element. So actually, you would think this is the first index, this is the second index, the third index, but it's actually, this is the zero index, and this is the one index. It's kind of weird. Just like when we do a for loop where we start at zero, and this is why I told you to start at zero, where we do int i equals zero, the reason you always start at zero is because arrays in C++ and Java and most languages 
are all indexed by zero, meaning the first element is zero. So if we type a zero here and then an indel, this is going to print out the first string, which should be boots. So let's see if we get boots on the screen. I go ahead and run it, and it takes a little while to build for some reason. There we go. If I zoom in here, you'll see it says boots. That's what we wanted. So let's go ahead and try to print out the entire shot. Let's use a for loop. So for int i equals zero, just like our array, it's indexed at zero. i is less than four. Remember, you don't say less than or equal to. You just say less than, and it'll go through all of them. Because this last kitten variable right here is at index three, because it's zero, one, two, three. So this is going to go all the way to three and print out the last one, uh, kitten, as well. So i++. Plus plus. And then in here, we'll put the c out statement. Instead of c outing um, this zero right here, we're going to put an i. So that it's going to loop through the array. First time we go through the uh, for loop, it's going to do a zero here. So we're going to get boots. Next time, we're going to print out sword. Next time, helmet. Next time, kitten. Because each time we go through the array, this i variable increases by one. So then we'll say, uh, we'll put some stars down here or something like that. And two new lines. And then see out what would you like to buy or something like that. And we'll, we'll make it so we can buy stuff here in a minute. So let's go ahead and hit. Uh, local Windows debugger up here and run it. There we go, it worked. So if I zoom in right here, it lists all the items in my shop. I've got boots, swords, helmet, and kitten. If I want to add a new item to the shop, I'll just change this to a five, and then right here on the end, I'll add my new item, and we're gonna call it uh, Polaxe or something, some kind of weapon. There we go, and then if I run it again, we should get that new variable. No, we didn't, because I didn't change the for loop. Got to change that to a 5 as well. Now, an easy way to keep track of the size of your array in case you change it and add a new one or something is instead of just typing a 5 here and a 5 here, we could make an integer variable, int num items. And this is going to be the number of items in the shop. And then we can set this equal to 5. Okay. And then we can use num items right here and right here. So then if we want to add, a new item, all we have to do is change this to a 6 and then add a new item right here. However, we're getting an error here. If you mouse over, it says expression must have constant value. Now, the reason it's saying that is because this is not a constant variable, meaning you could change it. And the reason it gives you this error is because the compiler can only create an array if it has a constant size. Now, what that means is that the array never changes its size. Now, if I type num items equals 5 here, and this this is uh, um, this will get uh, set to a size of 5, if later I said num items equals 3 or 4 or something, that's going to you know cause issues. So what we want to do in order to make this work is just type const int num items equals five. This variable, this uh, qualifier right here, const, it tells our compiler that this is a constant variable, meaning it's never going to change. And now the error is going to go away. And that's what we want because we're never going to change the number of items for as long as this game is, is going. If we want to change the number of items, we're going to have to use something called a vector, which we'll learn about later. So this is going to work now. We're going to get all five of them. And if we want to change it to six, all we have to do is put a six here and then add a new one right here. So we'll say um, leggings or something. So let's print this out one last time. And then in the next video, we'll actually make it so that we can buy things. We'll get a little bit more uh, practice with this. So there we go. It printed out all that stuff. Boots, sword, helmet, kitten, polex, leggings. Now, the thing about constant ints, right, and constant variables is whenever we type constant, we're telling the compiler this is never going to change. So if I said num items equals 9 here, it's going to give me an error pretty much right away. See, if I mouse over, it says expression must be a modifiable L value, which basically means this is a constant. You can't change it. Sorry, but that's okay. That's what we want. We don't want to change the number of items in this game. And all right, so that's the first episode on arrays. Join me next time, and we'll, we'll uh, do a little bit of review and make it so that you can buy items from the shop.